Welcome to another episode of C. Damon Trek. I'm here in Pareda, Colombia, and we are getting ready to go on a three-day, two-night trek to climb a glacier in the, uh, in the Nevada National Forest. And so what I want to talk to you today is about how I'm packing, what my thinking was about that packing, and the contingencies that caused me to pack that way. Now, we're going to have two bags. I call this my A bag or my backpack. You've seen them. You know what they are. It's got the camel back in the back. You'll be carrying your own water. And then you've got your B bag, which is the bag that will accompany you either by horse or by truck, that as you climb, it follows you to your campsite every night and is dropped off. Now, I like this kind of bag because it opens up, you don't have to dump everything out, uh, you can see everything, and it's got pouches on the side to where you can put particular things. Now, what I did not know was our bee bag is not going to accompany us, it's actually going to meet us at the jump off point to go up the glacier, and we will begin the climb of the glacier at approximately 2 o'clock in the morning on Thursday morning. So that changes some things. So what I've decided to do is, instead of using an open-faced bag, I'm just going to throw everything in my, in my duffel bag because it's, it, it fits better for the porters to load on and off the truck, and it's waterproof. So with that, what I want to do now is take you through my packing list, what's going in the A bag, because what's going in my backpack for two days, and then what I will have meet me on the morning of the third day that I can put on in preparation for the climb of the glacier. So, here it is. Everything's laid out on the bed. We've had our meeting tonight, and now I've got to decide what am I willing to carry on my back for the first two days, and what am I going to have meet me for the ascent of the, of the glacier. Now keep in mind, if you're anything like me, when you first take off on a trek, the first day you overpack on your back, and then by the second day you're throwing everything into your bee bag so that the horses or the trucks can carry it. This time, I won't have that choice. I've got to choose correctly the first time. So let's just go through what my thinking was. I've got two pairs of shoes. I've got tennis shoes, lightweight tennis shoes. I think they'll do me good for the first two days. So my, my hikers that the, that the crampons will go on, they're going to go in the bee bag. So we'll put them in there. I've got three pairs of socks because I'm going to be walking for three days. I don't want to carry any more than necessary, so I'm going to take two, one pair of socks, a sock and a liner, and I'm going to put that in the bee bag. Now, I've got two pairs of spandex underwear. I can only wear one at a time, so for two days, I'm going to powder up real well and just wear one. And I may end up just only wearing one pair for three days. I've got my lightweight long underwear. I tell you what. This stuff is worth its weight. I'm going to keep that long weight, lightweight, long underwear, and I'm going to pair it with a pair of shorts. And I'm going to pair it with rain gear. My heavy cold weather pants, those are going in the bee bag. I'm going to wear one wicking shirt. I'll have this on. And then here's an extra wicking shirt. I'm going to put that in the bee bag. Now this is one of my favorite shirts here. It's a poly pro shirt. It'll keep me real warm. I'm going to keep that with me. I'm going to put that in my backpack. This heavy, uh, it's not actually heavy, but this winter coat for the climb up the glacier, that's going in the bee bag. Now here's what's making me really sad. This is my sleepwear, which also, in an emergency, doubles as clothing to wear if everything gets wet, and I've got my, my little footsies. 
On this particular occasion, I'm going to put them all in the B bag. So that means on the first night that I'm sleeping at one of the farmhouses, I'll just be sleeping in my underwear and a t-shirt. My heavy rain jacket, I'm gonna go ahead and keep and I'll carry that. I've got my heavy gloves and my lightweight gloves. The heavy gloves are gonna go in the bee bag. Of all my hats, I've got my winter hats and I've got my baseball cap. Baseball cap is staying. Winter, winter hats are going in the bee bag. Now, this is where some of the things have changed. Because my, my uh, accruta moths are somewhat heavy, I'm going to powder up heavy uh, tomorrow, and then I, that's going to go in the bee bag. I'm going to powder my feet up heavy tomorrow, and that's going to go in the bee bag. I'm going to keep my sunblock. I'm going to keep my baby wipes against my better judgment because toilet paper will be provided. But I got to tell you, can you really beat baby wipes? And against my better judgment, I'm going to carry my own milk and my own sugar. And the reason why is because the farmhouses don't provide uh, milk. Uh, they do provide sugar, but not a sweetener. And, you know, as long as I've got my coffee, I think I can pretty much survive anything. And then, of course, I don't care what, but my passport and my cash will always travel with me, along with my credit cards, in a waterproof container. And then, beside that, all I need is my toothbrush and toothpaste. Okay, so, I want to talk about some things that I haven't done in the past that has made my trekking much easier this time, okay? When I was doing Kilimanjaro and uh, uh, Nevada del Tolima and Santa Barbara and Honduras, I, I was basically just putting a rucksack on my back and muscling it, up, muscling it up the hill. This time, I'm using walking sticks. And a friend that I've met on this trip, her name is Guanel, and she's an experienced trekker, and she says that using walking sticks can improve your durability by up to 30 percent another thing i've done is for the first two days of this trip i'm wearing tennis shoes there's no need to wear heavy boots for the first two days of the trip because what will happen is over the couple of days you're going to get uh, an aggregate fatigue another thing i'm doing is i'm wearing shorts this time i won't be wearing pants until we go up the glacier another thing i've done is i bought a rucksack with a belt that, I tell you, it makes it a whole lot easier, takes the weight off your shoulders. And then of course, I'm still sticking with the wicking away shirt. So all of these things combined has made today's travel, and I anticipate it being tomorrow's travel, a lot easier. Just a few things I've learned along the way that I, I hope help you.